Now, having come to faith, God could have taken you um, uh, in, in a lot of different directions, um, but he called you to stay in Bethlehem and enter the ministry. How, how did that happen? I want to ask each of you, how did the Lord actually call you into serving him full-time vocationally? In this case, as pastors. Uh, we'll start with you, sure. Uh, <clears throat> when I was about 16 years old, uh, you know, we had a youth camp, and uh, this missionary, uh, she was talking to us about the harvest, how great workers are few, so, this is the same missionary that helped yeah, you this lady, with, yeah, again, with the candy. Okay, <laughs> just, just making sure. She's influential. Yeah, yeah. yeah she, uh, the Lord put her in my life to uh, and, and now she's in, back in Germany, and, okay. and, and she's, uh, she's heading with her husband a Bible college oh, in, wow. uh, in, in Germany. Now, the, uh, the thing is... Um, I, I heard what she was talking to us. She's, she really was putting her life into us. Uh, we were just like, at that time, in that conference, uh, what conferences? Yeah, it's a conference, it was in her house. We, we were about 15, <laughs> 15 to 18 young people. So she talked to us. So she said, let's pray for the, you know, for the harvest, you know, for the workers. And so we start praying. And when you start working, yes, Lord, send them to the harvest. <laughs> yes, send them to the harvest, send them. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, and God said, <laughs> so when you finish, yes, how about you? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? Did I hear something? God speaks and says, well, well, why do you pray for others? Why don't you pray for yourself? I said, oh, well, that's selfishness. <laughs> so I, I, I said, well, and God says, no, I, I want you to go in that night. I, I felt it. He didn't speak vocally, but I, I could hear him from whole inside says, you, you. So it, it, it made me. You were 16. Uh, yes, That's yes. That's amazing. Yeah, right? Uh, yeah, I, I, I yeah. Yeah, no, it is. I was already, I started early. You, you know? got a good <laughs> jump start on um. So I told her, I said, God is putting on my heart to go into the ministry. So she said, okay, you, you, you pray about it, finish high school. If it is still, the, the voice still there, you come back to me and we, we will talk about the next. So I continued and the voice was there. You, you. So I, I kept going. And when I finished high school, went to the missionary and said, can I, I think this is what God wants me to do, uh, to serve in the harvest, to serve in the field, sorry, with the harvest. So uh, <clears throat> uh, she said, okay. Uh, so we both of us, uh, I mean, we prayed about it and now it's ready, finished high school. She said, now you need to be prepared for the ministry. So you have to go to Bible school and so on. So she made contact. I went to Germany. So I studied Bible uh, in Germany, uh, came back home. But when the night I was preparing to go out, uh, to, to travel, of course, uh, with my parents was not an easy thing, you know, to start out going to Bible school. And, what and, did they want you to do? Uh, my father was a constructor, you know, and he had some business, and I'm sure he wanted, and my grandfather, so it was like grandfather, uh, his, uh, my father, and go into that area, but I, I, <laughs> I had no interest. At it. It, it was burning in my heart to mm. serve the Lord. Mm. And so uh, in that night, uh, of course, I convinced my parents, I, you know, you, you have to fight with everything. Uh, thank the Lord, I am bold, so I fight. And Did you say bold or bald? <laughs> you just said this, I just was yeah. trying to... Uh, oh, I was oh, just yeah, well, I taking... Just, I, I wasn't quite sure if I picked up the word. No, I, I just got some... Uh, okay, I just said <laughs> bold. I think O oh, with a bold. Okay, just... So, so my parents <laughs> convinced, and now I'm preparing for next day to travel. Uh, so in the night, my mom comes and she said, oh, she's crying. I say, uh, why are you crying? And, and, and she said, oh, <laughs> I said, I, I will be, co I'll come back. Don't I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm coming back because I know that God is, wants me uh, back in Bethlehem. She said, no, 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 no. I'm crying because of something else. I said, what, what is it, mom? She said, you know what? When I was pregnant with you, 
uh, I saw a vision. I said, what? <laughs> vision? She said, yes, I've seen like a, a caravan of fire, caravan, you know, a caravan. Caravan? You know, you know uh, like Elijah went up. Okay. okay. What do you say? That? Chariot. Chariot? Chariot. Chariot. Yeah. Where did I get the caravan? <laughs> Sorry, my English is Sorry. just going to England somewhere. <laughs> chariot, chariot, yeah. She saw like a chariot of fire coming down with the Jesus inside it, and he took the boy, uh, and he said, this boy is for me. So he puts him in the chariot, went up to heaven, and all that time uh, she thought, I will die, you know, oh. that Jesus will take me to heaven. So all the time she was afraid for me, you know. And in that night she told me, now I understand where you're going. Jesus wants you. I said, why didn't you tell me that before? <laughs> but I thank the Lord that she did not tell me that until I made the decision. So my decision was not just because of her vision. The vision was like to support the decision. So, uh, and this encouraged me. Wow. Wow. <laughs> So, uh, encouraged me, so I went out very, very, you know, s s uh, uh, bold. <laughs> 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 I went out very, and, and really got excited about uh, studying and, and know that this is what the Lord wants me to do. Mm -hmm. And praise the Lord. The next day, went to the, uh, you know, Israeli airport at that time and need to checkpoint. I had one paper missing and all of that. And with that paper, nobody, nobody, nobody will, will go out. So I said, God, you called me to go out and study, and now uh, the, the plane will go. I said, no. So they returned me back. So I go back to Jerusalem, and I went to the Ministry of Interior in Jerusalem, and I am not supposed to go there. This is for the Israelis. But I said, you know what? I, miss, I, I lost that paper. Can you have a miracle happened in just seconds? They said, okay, we give you this paper. So when I went out, the pastor looked and the, the, the missionary looked at me and she said, what? How can... I said, I don't know. They, they gave it to me. God wants me to, to travel. He can change governments for... <laughs> 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 so it was another, like, uh, like God says, yes, I want you to go. So I went yeah. and I had the paper and I traveled and so on. So yeah. I went out to Germany, studied there, came back home, uh, did uh, one year uh, uh, we'll ministry. We'll pick up because I, I, your, your story of becoming a pastor is, is an yes. important one and, 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 and um, instrumental in, in, yes. in formational. Uh, so we'll come back to that. So Munir, Chariots of Fire, is that your favorite movie? No, I don't no. know what's... Uh... My mom didn't. <laughs> My mom didn't want me to go, so I was very bold with her when she said that. <laughs> I think Elijah did say, you know, when no. the kid said, go up, you bald head. And then the, anyway, the fire and they consumed him. Anyway, it's a different no. story. Back to him here. <laughs> it's being bald, you know, whatever. Anyway, when, when I was a child in the Christian boys' home, and I was really memorizing verses and hearing the voice of God and hearing the speakers and different speakers, and I used to go to, we have flat roofs in Ramallah, I used to climb on the roofs and I used to sing and talk with God. And I say, oh God. And at that time when I was a teenager, God called me to the ministry. And I felt I need to go to Bible college. So when I finished high school, I have no money to go to Bible college. In fact, I went to go to Lebanon and in Lebanon they said, you need to have so much money to come. Oh, I said, forget it. Then I wrote a letter to uh, a house father who used to be at the home where I was raised. And I said, you know, I really don't have money for Bible school, but I want to serve the Lord. I want to go to Bible school. So he wrote back and he said, just buy your ticket and just come and we'll be glad to give you the scholarship. But now I don't have money for my, uh, for my ticket. So I went to my uncle who was very rich and my mom went called him. He said, don't give my son money because we want him to be in the mm -hmm. ministry. We want him to be a lawyer. We want him to be anything else but not a minister. Mm -hmm. So I was very bold with her then. That's when <laughs> I was. So finally, I kept after my uncle who used to come to Amman every day. He comes there. He's a, he was a big merchant. And I said, uncle, I need just 90 JD, about $150 for my ticket. 
and just let me go, let me go, I need to go. Finally, he said, you know, you know, my nephew, get away from me, here is your 90 JD and get buy your ticket and go. And I got my visa and I, I remember kneeling at the bed in, in my town called Salt, S-A-L-T, in Jordan. And I said, Lord, I want to really go and serve you, please go before me. And sure enough, God went before me and that's how I finished my education, Bible college, then went to Wheaton Graduate School, then went back to serve the Lord in that land, in the very same home I grew up at when I was a boy. Amen. Amen. Now, Munir, I just want to clarify something for, uh, for everyone. So um, while you were raised in that home in Ramallah and returned back to serve at the congregation and, and, and boys' home, um, as you said, you were born in, in Jordan. Jordan, on the other side of the river, on the yes. east side, right? And, um, and so you're a Jordanian national citizen. Yes. But Jordan used to control, to control uh, west side uh, and the west east bank. side of and the so, Jordan River. Gotcha. And we used to travel together till 1967, and the home was there. And then when I left the United States in 1978, I went to direct the very same home uh, that I grew up as a boy, yeah. and I knew what it is, and I still do that till today. We have 50 children mm -hmm. that we sponsor mm -hmm. at this time to help those needy children. It doesn't matter if they are Jews or Palestinians, Muslims or Christians, girls or boys. So I'm thankful for that, Amen. and I continue Amen. to do that. Amen. One other point of clarification before we go to Mazen. Um, as I recall, but, but correct me if I'm wrong, when you, the, the, the Bible college you ended up going to uh, is just outside of Rochester, New York. Lima, New York. Lima, New York. Lima, New York. Yeah. Uh, Elam Bible Elam college. Bible right. Institute. So it's interesting. So uh, I was born in Syracuse, uh, and then my parents uh, moved to a town just outside of Rochester, New York. Um, and so uh, I, I think, wow, if somebody from Jordan uh, you know, <laughs> comes to Bible college, I would think of any other place uh, than the cold and the snow and the of, of upstate New York, don't, don't but I, you know, I loved it. But I didn't know if you would love it. <laughs> no, no. I, I remember, you know, when I got there, and it's a small little town, and nobody's there. It, I came a month before this college started or the school, and I saw a plane up in the sky. I said, "Please, plane, take me back where I came from." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that was August, so okay. you understand it. <laughs> By October <laughs> and November, he's like, oh, uh, Lord, are you sure? Still it got to that <laughs> Exactly. One. At least the chariot of fire would have melted the snow, yeah. but now yeah. nothing. I, I was lonely at the time, yeah. you know. <laughs> All right, great. So, so Mazen, so you come to faith at the age of 29. Uh, your life is taking a big detour. It's not like you were a, a teenager and thinking, oh, okay, Lord, where do you want me to go? So this is, so, but as I recall your story, you get involved in ministry Almost, almost immediately, right? Yes. First, let me say thank you, Lord, for my hairs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> not, not, not much left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you know, when I when I come when I when when I uh, when I came to faith. See what happens when you have hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when, when I came to faith uh, from a... <laughs> from a Christian background, uh, and I was uh, 29 years old, it was a shock for me, really. And uh, I had two questions I asked the Lord. Uh, first, first, I told you, uh, Lord, why it is now? And the second question I ask... Meaning, because why didn't you save me sooner when I was younger? Yes, you why, yeah. why it wasn't okay. when I was younger, when I was 16 years, why, 29 years old, I felt it's very late. Mm. And the second question I ask the Lord, Lord, how come you are always with me and you are leaving all the world? Because I was really feeling that the Lord is always with me. It's, it was very sweet. Uh, feeling, but but this uh, and and the third question: What brings me to ministry, Lord? What about my friends and my parents? And uh, 
this directly was taking me without being an official uh, servant or minister or, or even thinking of calling or something. I was just going to my friends every day, uh, the same places that we were gambling, we were doing many sins together. Uh, telling them uh, uh, this is not Christianity what we are in. It's a, it's a fake Christianity. So, uh, so I was going from door to door telling every, every friend uh, what is the real Christianity, telling my family, my parents, uh, what, 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 what happened to me uh, and how Jesus is, uh, wants a special relation with, with you, every one of you, every indi individual. And then um, uh, 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 Christian, uh, Christian uh, organization, Campus Crusade of Christ, uh, they, they have a, a offices in, in the same area around us, and uh, they were watching me, and they came and they said, uh, uh, we, we see your desire to share Christ with others, and this is what we are doing. So uh, we want you to come and, uh, and be one of our staff. I said, uh, and I was really maybe a six months old Christian. And I said, uh, I, I don't know anything. <laughs> and he said, uh, the pastor, Egyptian pastor, he said, don't worry, we will train you. The most important you are doing, you, you are doing this. So uh, they took me and they trained me for uh, three months and there was a, a, a big project. I was part of it. Uh, I may share about that uh, later, but... Uh, no, I think that, j yeah. just take that moment okay. now. I think it's, it's, it's useful so, to see how quickly yeah. you're getting involved. So it was a, it was a, a project, the Explo 2000, and um, they distributed uh, around Just Israel. Just to be clear, he's not saying explode. I know it's the Middle East, but Explo, explo was the 2000. Without was a, D. An, yeah. a, a, an evangelistic project. <laughs> well, if they heard it wrong, that would, you know, it just, yeah. just pro I'm just protecting you, brother. Um, I'm just... Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, just... Because <laughs> that was the, really the next year. But anyway, that's a different issue. Yeah, so don't worry, guys. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, they distributed over uh, uh, Israel, Palestine, 45,000 Jesus films. And my role was uh, 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 responding to emails, letters, and whatever we received, uh, uh, and also calling people on the phone. Uh, uh, how do you like the film? Uh, what do you like about it? Uh, yeah. and. Uh, one, one person, I will share this Please. very shortly. Yeah. One person, uh, uh, we, we call him and he said, thank you for calling me. And uh, I love this film. And uh, I, uh, I went through all of it. Uh, I, I heard the prayer at the end of the film. I prayed that prayer. I want to follow Jesus. What can I do more? Amen. Wow. Yeah. So... <laughs> without even without doing anything so uh, at this at that year uh, we we discipled 17 people not from a christian background uh, through that it's it's uh, it's the thing that i was it's a part that i was involved on but other things other good things was happen uh, also so uh, and and then uh, the church they came and they said uh, we are looking for local pastors, uh, and we want you to join the staff. You came uh, from the uh, from our ministry to the Lord, and we want you with us. And I was very newly married. Uh, we pray, me and my wife, and I felt uh, this is the next step. So I left uh, Campus Crusade, and I joined the church. Mm, amen. Amen. Just as, as an aside, I, you know, I, I, I can't think of a conference I've ever been at where almost everything that every speaker says receives applause. I mean, unless it's a political convention. I mean, but I noticed it in the, in the Messianic side. I'm seeing it here. I think, you know, people who love the Lord and love 
the people of the Middle East, they don't get a chance to meet them, right? And, and all you get from the mainstream media is just bad guys. So it's great to have some, um, some dear brothers here and, and you can see the response. Well, well, I am glad that Joe is saying, pray for the Arab people as much as you're praying for the Jewish people coming out of that. It's time to do that. And I'm thankful for you for saying that. And thank you so much. Absolutely. So, so you had just said that in that year you saw 17 Muslims come to faith. You began to, your team began to disciple them. You were part of it. Now, uh, Pastor Munir, again, as a pastor, but also as, you know, in this role of, of helping oversee uh, the pastors and ministry leaders and, and, be, and, and help guide the, 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 the leadership level thinking about how the body grows and matures, the, the idea of... Um, of, of Christian, uh, Arab evangelical Christians reaching out to Muslims, that may seem obvious to this audience and those who will be watching on, online, but it, that, that has actually not been the, the historic view of the church in the Middle East, to the Christians reaching to Muslims and trying to help them find Christ. Would you talk about that a little bit and then your own experience, but also why? Why? Am I accurate that that has not been a, okay. a passion of the church, uh, broadly speaking, in the Middle East? See, over the centuries, the church have ignored the Muslims to be reached for the Lord because they thought they are hard to reach. But when uh, 40 Window started and people start to pray for the Muslim ministries, we start to see a change. 40 years ago, when I went to the mission field, left the States and went, if you ask me, you think people will come in the West Bank churches in Bethlehem, East Jerusalem, in Ramallah to worship with you, I would say no. But today, we are seeing a change in that, and many factors are helping us. One of them is television, where our, we have 14 Christian stations in the Middle East where they broadcast what Islam is all about and what Christianity is all about. So Muslims are coming to know the Lord. And we are having people come to worship with us. I know in my experience, and perhaps other pastors can speak for themselves, I have an uh, individual person not long ago came to the Lord, and he said, I want to testify in, in behind the pulpit about how I got saved and how Islam did not answer my prayers. I went to atheism and that didn't answer me. When I, went, when I came to Jesus Christ, he answered my prayer. I have another family that worship, a Muslim family that worship with us on a regular basis. And we have in our church in Ramallah, a Bible study for two years. Uh, every Saturday for three hours, the students meet and talk about Jesus, and they have books, and it's regular school, and three of them are Muslims, and one of them is, a, is an attorney. And the ones before, I have people who were in a prison, in the Israeli prisons, and they came and they said, we want to know more about Jesus. And they graduated after two years. So I'm really thankful for the openness of Islam into the uh, accepting Jesus Christ as their personal savior. And some of them worry about it because of the family background. But, you know, you know, we still not saying, here it is, you know, see what we are doing. We try also to be careful because we know it's not easy to be a Muslim and born again person and being in a church. Uh, one of the ladies that come to my church, she comes with her face cover, and then when she comes to the church, she goes into the bathroom, changes. Although I told her, we don't mind it. But again, what I did, I from behind the pulpit, because the people are not used to see Muslims coming into the church. So I tell them we need to accept them as we are accepting anybody else. And sure enough, she comes to the ladies' meeting, they come to the children uh, program, they come to the church worship, and so forth. So I'm really thankful for the openness So to of be Islam. clear, uh, you're talking about Muslims who've, who've, who've left Islam and come to faith in Jesus. Yes. You're still describing them as Muslims because, meaning, they're not yeah. from a Christian background. Again, yeah. I'm using the term MBB, but you're saying, but that's the way you're thinking of them. They, they, they are born and raised in Islam, but yeah. they're hearing satellite television, internet, a number of dreams and visions. They, they say no to Islam, they say yes to Jesus, and now they start looking for somebody that they can go to, to be discipled and yeah. come to church, and, and, the, and they're actually yeah. coming to the church. Yeah. For example, in Ramallah, if they want a Bible, 
we are there as evangelical church and we are known and they come to us and they, they want a Bible. I remember an engineer in his fifth year came to me and he said, Pastor Munir, I want to know, I want to study about Jesus Christ. Mm. Can you help me to know about Jesus Christ? Sure enough, we did and we did for others. So there is that, Joe, the mm. openness of Muslims to want to know more about Jesus. And of course, uh, yesterday they mentioned they had about ISIS. So they are seeing the ugly face of Islam and they want to see the loving face of a Christianity so they come to know about that <laughs> side of Christianity. Mm. One other point of clarification, uh, Mazen said that he was, uh, uh, he joined the staff for a while of, of Campus Crusade for Christ. I will just note uh, that they don't call it that there. Uh, you know, it, it's not a strong brand in a positive to say you work for Crusade, if, you know, in, in the Muslim world. So uh, uh, they, they call it life agape uh, there. So just, I, I want to, you know, just nuances here. Now, I heard about Nihad before we met because... Um, my wife and son, our four sons, uh, actually we only had three at the time, uh, got invited to come on, a, on a, a ministry project of Life Agape in southern Spain to hand out Bibles, New Testaments, and the Jesus film, and children's materials, gospel materials, in Arabic and in French. And uh, North African Muslims who are working and living in Europe, and they want to go back to Morocco or Algeria or Tunisia or wherever, uh, they, 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 they drive down the long summer vacations and they get on a ferry and, and they, they, they go back uh, home for a while to visit family and friends. And uh, there's, it's sort of like a, a choke point where you have these long lines of, of, of traffic coming in and, and so you have a moment to try to offer a packet of, uh, of these gospel materials. And so we, we got invited to do that. We did that three years in a row and that began to... Uh, give us a, a heart for Muslims that we, um, I, we weren't opposed, but we were like, we didn't really have a lot of connection. So this ministry was Life Agape, and they were teaching us. Well, while we were there, there were three young Palestinian uh, guys who were so on fire for Jesus. And in part because they were, you know, they, they had not been raised as believers, they'd come to faith. They'd been very involved, as I recall, at least two of them, uh, in the Intifada, and they were throwing rocks at Israeli soldiers and whatever, and they, because this was part of the Palestinian national movement, and they were young, and they wanted to get involved. But they came to faith, and then, but still, the, the, the difficulties of sharing the gospel and, and serving the Lord in Bethlehem or in the West Bank was still hard. So coming to Spain, suddenly they felt like they were breathing fresh, free air, and they could tell any Muslim about Jesus, and they just were, oh, they were very excited. So we got excited by building a friendship with three Palestinian believers. So we said, well, where do you go to church? They said, oh, it's a wonderful church. It's Emmanuel Church in, in, in Bethlehem. And so oh, tell us. Well, it was for a long time before we became believers, we, you know where I'm headed, uh, we thought it was kind of, we never would go to that church because honestly, there really wasn't anybody in that church. And uh, we weren't Christians anyway. And as we were called, there was just one guy, at one point, at one point, uh, there was just one guy who went to the church, one man. But the pastor was very formally trained and he would get up at the pulpit and he'd say, please open your hymnals to, you know, please rise and open your hymnals to page 245. And the one guy would be like, I guess that means me. Uh, Okay, and, you know, and, but this man was very faithful, we, but we used to laugh at him. Uh, but now we came to Christ, now we're going to that church, the church is filling, people are, you know, something is happening. And we got excited. And then eventually I met the, the, that pastor, and pastor, you are the pastor. And I was, uh, God was bearing much good fruit through you, and we saw it, um, and it was exciting. So talk to us a little bit about becoming a pastor, some of... Um, I do want in a moment to learn about your heart from reaching Muslims, but first, being a pastor and not seeing fruit for a while, and how hard that is, um, let's start on that, because we can talk a lot about exciting stories, people coming to faith, but sometimes you're a pastor and nobody's coming to faith. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll also, for your question, I will add to please, later, later please. on okay. uh, 
what, what uh, Brother Munir okay. said. But I'll, I'll add that later. Okay. Now, uh, to your question here, yes, I, 1991, myself, my wife came back, you know, after we finished, uh, I finished uh, Bible school in, uh, in, in Germany, came back home, did one year, uh, like, uh, practical, practical ministry. Then uh, in, I was too practical, I got married, and both of us, <laughs> Both of us That's went good. to the States, and we studied, did some graduate studies in, in theology and so on. And 1991, we came back. I was given a small church in, next to Bethlehem called Bejal. I got so excited. I, 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 and, and, you know, I was given also a van, and so I could get the whole church in that van. We had nine members. <laughs> so we, and, and, and I had, like, door-to-door -door service, so I take them from their home, bring them to church, uh, preach to them, and take up the offering, sing to them. I didn't have anybody to, to play music. I, I started learning guitar. I learned the E minor, and all our songs went into E minor. <laughs> Nobody understood anyway, so I was just... <laughs> <laughs> and got it going. So after one year, I think everybody left. So I was left with one, at least one lady. I, I know why she left. She, she, she died. Oh, oh, <laughs> at least I know why Lord, she left. No, and, and another two I, I kicked out. Oh, okay. I was okay. church discipline. So <laughs> I learned that in the West. So what, what I did, so ended up with an empty church. So 1992, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97. And I had to write to the denomination. I was working a, a, a report every month. How many attend church? Zero. <laughs> How many baptized? Zero. How many new members? Zero. At the end, I told them, you know what? Co photocopy my last year <laughs> reports. Take them for next year. <laughs> year after year. But in 1997, and what was the worst is when, when you go to pastors' conferences, and then oh, the first oh. question, how many do you have in your church? Uh, it's full. <laughs> full of the Holy Spirit. You know, that's what I mean. <laughs> I'm not lying. So what happened is, uh, 1997, I really felt failure, because after so many years, so I come to the Lord and I said, Lord, you're pretty patient. I would have felt like a failure that first year, but I'm bold. Well, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But it didn't work. So <laughs> I, Ninety-seven. I really spoke to the Lord, and I said, "Lord, uh, maybe I missed it. Maybe you called me to the ministry, but not to Bethlehem. Is there somewhere else or something else I need to do?" So the Lord put on my heart to read the book of Jeremiah. So I go to that, to the book of Jeremiah. I get, I read it very, you know, you, when God puts on your heart something, you do it very fast. And I, I come back and I was so excited because the message in Messiah there, uh, in, in Jeremiah, it's there, it speaks about exile. So, wow, where do you want me to go? Exile, yes, <laughs> where? <laughs> And then the Lord didn't give me any answer. He, and then I kept asking, Lord, what, what, where, what? You know, uh, Jeremiah, probably Germany, Jeremiah, Germany. Got to, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you start dreaming. <laughs> and so the Lord says, no, what about the prophet Jeremiah? So well, what about him? Who is he? Oh, he served the Lord since he was a little boy. All his life, he served God so faithfully. He heard God. He spoke to God. He was the, 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 the mouth of God. He, he's, he even have two books in the Bible under his name. It's, he's a great, a great uh, prophet. Yes. And how many did he have in his church? Nobody. All his life, nobody believed his, uh, his message. Nobody followed him, even the one who was writing, you know, copying for him. He, 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 at one point, said, I mean, <laughs> in the eye, see, in our eyes, success is how many and how much. But in the eyes of God, success is faithfulness. He was, amen. He, he, he was faithful in the eyes of God because he stayed where God wants him to stay and he spoke what God wants him to speak. So he was faithful and that's why God honored such men. 
and also women. So faithfulness was the lesson. So I said, Lord, I'm sorry, I repented. I said I wanted to run away, but I, 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 another 40 years and nobody in church, you want me here, I will stay here. Bethlehem is my place. And so I, I, I kept going. And you know, uh, it's, it's uh, unless he changes his mind, I'm waiting, but he didn't. Till so far, he's, he did not change it. It's still Bethlehem. 98, 99, the denomination I was working with, you know, they said, oh, what are you doing down there? <laughs> so at the end, you know, when, when you don't get in the churches, and, and, and sometimes when the denomination wants you out, they tell you, is it okay? How about if you pray and fast about the ministry? You know, when things are going all right, nobody asks you to fast and pray, you know? but when <laughs> they want you to fast. So I got the message. They are pushing us out. So, uh, and that was a little bit hurtful because uh, they got so excited. In the 90s, many of the Russian Jews, they were coming back to the land and so on. And, they, and, they, and some of them were already uh, Messianic Jews and, uh, and uh, already believed in Jesus. And they were looking for uh, uh, denominations to make like an umbrella for them to work under. So they got excited. They got like three groups already started in, in, in Israel. And, and, they, and they forgot about the work in the West Bank. Anyway, it's not going well and so on. So the superintendent told me, he said, listen, when we talk about the Israel, every, the whole church gets excited. But when we talk about the Palestinians, it's like we pull, we're pouring cold water on them. Mm -hmm. So I got the message, resigned, left. Anyway, I think to leave. So I left, and, and, and then I said to my wife, now what? She said, we're not alone. We are here. You know, God is with us, you know, Emmanuel. So we continued ministry, different ministries and doing several stuff. I teach at Bible College. I, I do a humanitarian organization, but that was not my passion. My passion is to really serve uh, as a shepherd and, and, and serve the Lord. In, uh, so we stayed, we continued, but the Lord really had a different story. He says, all right, now you learn the lesson. Ten years, you learn to be faithful, you learn to trust me. So, the, you know, God will. sometimes, it took me ten years. Some people take some one month, like Joel is very clever. Well, he did no, it, I, I, years, you know? no, I did the ten years of the political failure thing, so, uh, okay. oh, so yeah, so I, you so, know. so I didn't, it, it, sometimes, you know, the, the people of Israel, 40 years, and they didn't learn the lesson of, and they, and they, and they died in yeah, the, so by that standard, the, you're doing the, very well. So I was, yes, yes, well, yes yeah. Yeah, Palestinians sometimes do it. And so it, it, it turned out that when you learn the lesson, God says, all right, I, I, let me show you what I can do. So we had at that point some people around us. They had like five people coming to have a Bible study. Then they said, can we bring our wives? And then started. And the five in the 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, the five become 50, the 50 become 100, the 100 become 150. And I was like, oh, hallelujah. I was walking on water, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, wow. And God says, all right, this is how I am doing. Let me show you also what I can do. And this was like among the nominal Christians, right. the 1%. But God has his heart also on the 99%. The Muslims. All right, I want you to hold that for a moment. Uh, see, I'm a, you know, I, I write thrillers, you leave them at the cliffhanger, we come back in a moment. So, I, all right, so now I want you to describe, so I want you to describe a little bit now, uh, Mazen, uh, being the pastor of the only evangelical congregation in the old city, and, and what a, an incredibly special but challenging place to serve. How, what are you seeing happen? Then I'm gonna come to you uh, Munir, and I want you to talk about uh, uh, broadly, because, you know, again, from your vantage point, both as a pastor and as an, as an overseer, in a, in a sense, I mean, in, in this governing body, what do you see some of the dynamics of, and then I want to come back and have you share how the Lord began to put Muslims on your heart and began to see them coming to faith. So that's kind of our, that's our next 10 to 12 minutes here. Uh, so you are asking, how is so, it in yeah, the old so, city? So what do you, yeah, what are you seeing happening in the old city? What are some of the, uh, the exciting things? What are some of the challenges of ministering there? Yeah, there is uh, several challenges uh, for for the ministry. Uh, one of them is living in that area. Living in that area is uh, it's an area is uh, that always uh, struggles happening. Uh, 
mainly uh, political, political struggles uh, in the area. Uh, I mean, every six months, one year, we have something new. Every six months, one year, we have something new. For example, the, the last uh, events was knives striking. And um, uh, at the same two weeks, uh, no one show in the church. People were was really afraid to come, and uh, even we were afraid. My my daughter's school are uh, just passing Damascus Gate, where all those events happening, and they should pass every day. And uh, we prayed. And uh, uh, like uh, everything is stopped, even the church was stopped. Mm -hmm. We prayed, and uh, the Lord gave us uh, uh, verses from Isaiah 43: "If you walk in fire, I'm with you. If you walk, uh, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you." So we we said, uh, "Okay, Lord, we will we will just uh, do our daily life." And we prayed with the girls. We start sending them, believing that the Lord will will keep them. And they were going every day. I was going every day. I was serving uh, in Beit Sahur. I was serving in Jaffa. I was serving in many places. So I, I just go and do the ministry normally, start sending texts to uh, the church. Uh, don't be afraid. Those verses that the Lord gave us, he will protect us. He will be. So this is always going. Mm -hmm. This is. Uh, so one of the main challenges is the political challenges. And this is uh, making the life of the Arab Palestinians uh, are really hard. And because of that, because of the, the uh, this is one challenge. We have other challenges. <laughs> but because of that, uh, people uh, are not good. Uh, uh, there is no good conditions for studies, for schools, for our daughters, our children. There is no good opportunities for works. Uh, there is no good opportunities to really uh, build a, a good uh, standards of life. So, if someone is a worker, he will be he who will be a worker all his life. If someone is a poor, he will be poor all his life. It's not like uh, there is opportunities to really uh, uh, feel that after working 30 years of my life, I will be in a good standards. Mm. So uh, because of this, people are leaving the country. And this is, was, I really, was one of the main struggles that the Arab Palestinians are uh, struggling fr from. So, for example, the percentage of the Arab Christians after the war of the 67, it was almost 20 percent. And now uh, in, uh, in the society, the, the Arab Christians are 2 percent. They are leaving. They are leaving. Mm -hmm. and, and because they are leaving, this also brings us to, to awaken. Yeah. I mean, uh, when I came to the church, we were only a very small church in, inside the old city, like uh, 40, 50 members. Uh, and, uh, and one of the other challenges was uh, that Christians coming to the Lord. And because Christian, coming, uh, because, uh, Christian are coming to the Lord, like myself, so uh, when I came to the Lord, I left the Greek Orthodox Church. When that guy came to the Lord, he left the uh, Catholic Church. And because of that, it's also uh, m make a big uh, problems between us and the historical churches that are uh, uh, located there. We have, inside the old city, we have 13 historical churches located inside the old city. And we are the only evangelical church, Arab church, located there. So, uh, so we had fights, not fights, but uh, like they, they don't like us. They speaking against us, even in the church services, they speaking against us. They will, they are not willing to let us use their fac facilities. The, the Catholic Orthodox Church own most, uh, more than half of the old city, they own it. 
uh, and uh, they, they own a lot of places outside the old city in Jerusalem as well. They are very rich churches. We are not allowed to use any facility of their churches. Uh, at the end, it was also with the Lutheran church. I mean, when I got saved, the event that I was talking about, it was in, in the Lutheran church. And at that point, they were letting the evangelical church use their facility. And two years later, the, the, uh, the bishop, he said, you cannot use our facility anymore. Uh, bishop, why? We are friends. And he, he, he himself, he, he, uh, he come back from the uh, evangelical uh, movement. He, he came to the Lord from the evangelical, why? And he said, because there are people from uh, our uh, denomination coming to your church. And they were only two. It's not, uh, so, so, so these are, these those, are enormous uh, yeah. challenges. Uh, you know, it's not just okay, the Jewish Arab challenge. You've got the historic church evangelical challenge. You've got the economic challenge. You've got, you know, all, and all the other challenges that every church faces that we talked in the last panel. Okay, so we're, okay. I want to go to you. Yeah, I see the time. And I, and I know, and some of this we're going to have to pick up. We have one more panel this afternoon okay. where you guys will be part of. But I want to come to you. So we're going to have to figure out how to use our time wisely. I won't take too I'm going to go five minutes over. So I'm, I'm oh, signaling okay. the guys that we're going to go five minutes over so oh, they can reset the <laughs> clock that yeah. we're going to do it anyway. And that's, the, that's called founder privilege. And uh, unless they turn Sorry, off the lights, I, long, I mean, uh, anyway. So... Okay. Pick up on that. I'm trained in America, so I'm not taking Middle East time, so I'll okay. be fast. First of, all, <laughs> first of all, on behalf of our council, we'd like to thank Joshua Fund for helping us out in a prayer and in finances. We really appreciate that. So I just want you to know we're glad that he's behind us on these things. <laughs> the other thing that I would like to mention Good news that you will not hear on CNN, and it's not fake news, okay? <laughs> uh, it's really, if you go from the north, uh, we have evangelical churches in a village called Zababde. If you go a little bit south, you'll find another village in Aboud. There is evangelical church and a school. If you come to Ramallah, there is an evangelical church. If you go to Jerusalem, we have evangelical church. If you go to Bethlehem, we have evangelical church. Even we have a witness with a school in Hebron. So we have 22, uh, uh, 22 churches and parachurch in our council that are really active with good leadership, a dedicated leadership, dedicated pastors that they want to really serve the Lord in spite of all the difficulties that we have in, in that region that we don't need to mention it, that you read about it. But I wanted to know the church is active. In 1978, I remember when we used to have a conference, we used to have all the evangelicals and some will come from Galilee to have us all in one tent, 300 of us there worshiping and having a conference. Today, we are over, in my estimate, at least 1,500 people are serving the Lord and are gathered and scattered in the West Bank, that's biblically Judea and Samaria, that are really serving the Lord. And we are growing on a daily basis. We have added people in our churches. We are discipling people. We have Sunday schools. We have camps. And we have ladies' meetings, uh, young people meetings, conferences, and the council meets once a month for a fellowship, as well as we have our constitutions, and we have what I call a fellowship and unity among us that we are serving together, planning together conferences for young people, for others, for that. So I'm really trying to tell you, God is working in the West Bank. Amen. Amen. I'll leave it there. Amen. No, no. So since, since I added five minutes, this is going to work out well because I'm going to ask you a follow-up question to that, and then you, and then we're going to end on your how God began to give you a heart for Palestine or for Muslims, and then we're going to be able to do more on the on the afternoon panel. But picking up on that, Pastor Munir. Um, so a number of years ago, you and I uh, sat together and and and. Uh, 
talk about, well, are there ways that the Joshua can be helpful? What would be helpful? And, and out of that, discussions and prayer, um, you know, your heart for a, a, a conference that would encourage pastors, but would be apolitical, right? Don't come and teach us about, you know, uh, but, but how, can, how can we study the word? How can we have fellowship? How can we have prayer? Um, would you talk a little bit about that process and the conferences that we've been having yes. together and because uh, I know, and that, but, but before you say that, let me just say, and I appreciate you saying th thank you to us, but I want to be clear. Have we ever asked you to change a theological or political position that you, you or any of your council might hold? Uh, thank you, Joel. Let me say this. I've been traveling in the United States. Actually, uh, my wife is back there sitting, hey. and Sharon Cock, she's from Minnesota. Uh, <laughs> Met her in Bible college. We have four sons and I have eight grandchildren. I don't look like it, so praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, actually, I really appreciate it because among evangelicals, it has been pro-Israel. And to come from a messianic, loving, in his kind way, Joe will say, I want you to pray for the Palestinians and the Arabs as much as you are praying for the Jewish people. This is really wonderful, and this is the spirit of Christ, for Christ died for all people. So when I met Joel, I said, Joel, would you like to come to Ramallah? He said, Ramallah? <laughs> you know, I am a Jew, can I come to Ramallah? I said, yeah, he said, well, you know, Something happens. I said, no, don't, don't worry. Nothing will happen to you. What could happen? No, what could happen? <laughs> He's just a Jewish guy. <laughs> anyway. And uh, he came to Ramallah, ministered in his own gentle way to my people there. He was accepted. Then I introduced him to the council uh, ministers and pastors. Oh, he's skipping apart. His first... <laughs> his first role as a, as a proud Palestinian pastor was to take me to Yasser Arafat's tomb. Oh. So this is just, you know. I tried to skip something, so <laughs> he wouldn't get in trouble. <laughs> no, no. I, anyway, I so I, I was nervous because, you know, some would say, Munir, do you know uh, Joel's, uh, you know, views on Israel? I said, yeah, you know, I read it on Google and I know who he is, but I'm going to take a chance. <laughs> So he came to our breakfast fellowship that month, every Saturday of each month we, we, we go there. And we had our breakfast, we have our fellowship, our prayer, our assignment. Then I said, well, I would like you to meet Joel Rosenberg. And in his kind ways, in his gentle way, said, please forgive me for not coming earlier to stand with you and be with you. And I'll tell you, if there were 10 walls, they fell down and it just the Spirit of Christ came among us. And that was the start. Then I said, can we do something for the Palestinian church? And he, we agreed on leadership that we do in November, which we will be doing it November 9th, 10th, and 11th. The first one, we started in the West Bank, and we had like 40 people, and then it increased and increased, and now they support us with uh, leadership seminar, basically what we do, we take, for example, the epistle of Philippians, and they bring with us like uh, Pastor Rich and Bill and others, and we just go there to read the word of God and worship the Lord and be there together for fellowship around the table. And the people start to know who Joshua is all about and who Joel is all about, and Everybody like him, and every year we look forward for such a conference. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, it's been really wonderful to see the Palestinian uh, leadership come together into uh, now into Jericho uh, and be in a hotel there and just being there. In fact, last year we were a little bit nervous, and the president of Palestine came into uh, our uh, uh, hotel. Uh, suddenly we saw all those... Uh, uh, Secret Service, army, army, and, uh, yeah. you know, and uh, They're having a police, summit, uh, uh, Mahmoud Abbas and the Prime Minister of Russia at the hotel where our conference <laughs> was, or his conference was. And here's all, all of them, and me, stupid me, and I go and say, uh, Mr. President, I am Dr. Munir Kakish, you know, I am the uh, chairman, and I want you to recognize our 
council so we can marry people and register the name the properties of the churches in the name of the churches and be able to open bank accounts and he said yes he and so and so anyway that's something else but really we are thankful for uh, Joshua's fund uh, in helping us in their leadership also we have ministers retreat that they help us with and I'm really thankful what they are doing also for the churches would it be on the West Bank or would it be in Israel it's wonderful to serve the Lord and to move on into Israel and its neighbors and we are the neighbors thank you, thank you. okay but just one last follow-up have we ever asked you to change no. a theological or political position that any of your uh, council might hold? I'll tell you again, my bald head can't take all these questions. Anyway, uh, really, if there was any time Joshua Fund or Joel would have asked us about our political views or about changing our theology, we will not partner with him. And, but always we were worshiping the Lord centering around the Word of God and being a loving for the people of Palestine. Because if we unpack that for the next couple of days, there are dis disagreements among us. Of course. We, we love each other, but there are disagreements. But closing on your, God putting a heart, uh, giving you his heart for Muslims. Let's, let's close on that, and then we'll pick it up in the afternoon as well. But why don't you share it? couple minutes on that. All right, uh, I, I served the Lord since 1991. Up till 2010, I did not want to have any, anything to do with the ministry among the Muslims because I, 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 I didn't want, you know, it's a difficult uh, place to go. And as, was, as God was blessing me among the, you know, <clears throat> expanding with the ministry among the Christians, so I was happy. But the Lord had something else. He put, several things happened, but at one time, uh, in one evening, I was like encounter with the Lord about this ministry. Of course, in that day, he had like five Muslims who are seeking the Lord came to me in the same uh, and different times in that day. So at the end of such a day, God speaks. And so I, at the end, I had to... Uh, you know, come down and say, yes, Lord, what do you want? I, I know I'm running away from this ministry. But God says, I have sheep outside this sheepfold. I want to bring in. So I said, that's your heart, Lord. But I, I, I cannot go in because, you know, I have two problems. The first one, I am afraid of this ministry. It, it, it's, it could get bloody. <laughs> When, when you walk into this ministry, it's a, it's a scary ministry. It's like walking into a minefield. You never know when it's going to blow. Uh, I said, God, they kill people. Do you know that? You know. <laughs> uh, so I was afraid, scared, uh, terrified. You just name it. So I said, that's the first thing, Lord, Lord, you deal with me on that level. I am afraid. Give me boldness. The second... <laughs> The second thing is a little bit harder because I don't like them. I, I, I don't like, uh, to be honest, Jenny, uh, what you see of ISIS today because of the media, but the, the story of ISIS has been since Islam came into the whole Middle East, you know, wherever they touched, it has been ISIS story. So Christians, Christianity in the Middle East have suffered uh, a, a century after century or, or a decade after a decade from this violence and, and genocide or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so it, it has been this. So Christians of the Middle East, we don't like Muslims. And for me, I don't love them. Yeah, okay, I love them. But at the end, they say, let them go to hell. Why should I evangelize them? They deserve it. And God says, it's like you deserve heaven. We're all saved by grace. And I forgot that. <laughs> so God reminded me. So, <laughs> so he said, okay. I said, all right, I, 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 put, I put this in before you. You work on me. That was 2010. I'm already 20 years in the ministry. And I prayed that prayer. <laughs> And God really in 2011, he worked on that. And in one verse, it says, perfect love cast out fear 
I know we're a little bit fast, so I cannot say more. No, we'll pick uh, it up. So, we'll all right. Up. So, and this is how God, uh, it took like one year he dealt with me. He brought to me some uh, seekers and who want, and, and really changed my heart towards them. And I started really be filled with the love of the Lord. And with the love of God, uh, really, it, it, I became more and more. So what? God is the sovereign God. God has all authority. Why am I afraid? Stupid. <laughs> But honest, and I'm grateful. Uh, so, and then, I'm going to close in prayer for these brothers. I want you to be te- not during the prayer, but afterwards you can keep texting in your your, uh, your questions uh, for them, uh, as well as obviously for the Messianic uh, pastors. And then um, uh, we're going to come back afterwards. Uh, and, and part of what we're going to be doing after lunch, and you're going to get a briefing on lunch in just a second. Um, but you're going to be, uh, we're going to do the state of the epicenter uh, message. We're going to uh, have the panel then with both the Jewish and Arab pastors together and, and, and put, unpack this even more. Uh, already a lot of questions are coming in. They've been encouraging. And so, uh, but, but don't hesitate to keep sending uh, more into us. Gentlemen, thank you. Let me pray for you. Thank you. Uh, Father, thank you. You are a great God and you're a good God. You are a merciful God. And you remind us that you love us and you love others. It's not just our tribe, but it's other tribes. You're bringing people from every tribe into your kingdom, Lord. And and for those of us who either are Jewish and love what you're doing among the Jews and and want to see it grow, or those who are Gentiles but but love Israel and they're passionate about Israel, Lord, I pray you give all of us a growing heart for our brothers and their wives and their families and their teams, uh, Palestinians and Arabs throughout the region who love you, who love you and are serving you faithfully. Their testimonies are precious. Their calls into, your call into ministry among them, it's precious. Uh, The the process you're taking them through to be salt and light uh, for your gospel, to fulfill the great commission Uh, in difficult situations, so many difficulties, and yet you are great, and you will reign from Jerusalem, and you will do a great and mighty work. And I think that the the harvest of the the Palestinians has has only just begun. I think we're seeing an early fruit, uh, and it's not easy fruit, um, but it's, it's early. I think your wave, the wave of your spirit is coming. Uh, it's already picking up on the Jewish side. I, I, I believe, and I know these men believe, that they are seeing things, that the breezes of your spirit are beginning to blow stronger. And we, we ask, Lord, that your spirit would, would move in great uh, might and power so that every Palestinian would have a chance to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ in whatever language, primarily Arabic, I guess, but any other language that, that connects with their heart. Or, and not just in the West Bank. We spent a lot of time talking about the West Bank, but our Palestinian, uh, the Palestinian people in Gaza, Lord, they're, they're trapped, they're, uh, they're poverty-stricken, uh, they're, they're facing tremendous uh, difficulty, uh, wars constantly, it seems, and we pray for them, Lord, to be set free spiritually and, and, and to find a way to have a, even a, a decent life, a, a normal life even. But you'd move in great power and glory. And you would appear in dreams and visions in, to every Palestinian in, in, in Gaza and, and the West Bank. We pray that... A satellite television broadcasting would reach every home, every person. We pray that radio and internet would be, would be able to reach all these people. And then the pastors and the ministry leaders on the ground, or that you'd strengthen them with courage, with boldness, with favor, so that as people start coming to, to, to know you, or and or those who have questions and these satellite television and the internet isn't enough for them. They need to go talk to someone, have coffee with someone, uh, break people together and ask questions and get answers from men who know you, from women who know you, or bless these, these leaders and, their, again, their wives and their teams. I'm grateful for these brothers, or I'm grateful for unity when we don't agree on everything, um, theologically, eschatologically, uh, politically, but, but you give us the chance to come alongside and help them do the work that you've already called them to do. Or the Joshua Fund, we're not here to do their work for them, but just to pray, encourage, support as we can the work you're already doing 
through these and, and, and their brothers as well. So bless them. Thank you for this time. Uh, may, may their faces come to mind as we pray uh, for the Palestinian people and may their tribe increase by your grace. We pray in the great name of Jesus, our soon coming King. Amen. 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 Subscribe to our videos by clicking the subscribe button. You'll find some videos that we've chosen specifically for you. And if this is a ministry that you'd like to support financially, just make a tax deductible donation by clicking here to visit our giving page. Thank you. We look forward to partnering with you to bless Israel and her neighbors in the name of Jesus.